Greetings folks and welcome to the Electromaker Show. This is your midweek roundup of all things Maker and Embedded and Lovely. This week we have advancements in machine learning on embedded devices. It's getting easier and better all the time. There is also an IRL Minecraft GOAT along with a few new products and of course funding website things and a very special competition. So with all of that to get through, let's get on with the show. We are starting this week with machine learning on the Raspberry Pi. Now, it's still not an easy thing to do, but it is getting easier and easier all the time. And that is largely thanks to the frameworks in place that make it easier. Um, and in this instance, this is a very fully featured framework uh, from Raspberry Pi, Adafruit, and Microsoft. So as well as the Raspberry Pi, there are two main elements to this. One is an Adafruit brain hat. And this is essentially a hat for the Raspberry Pi, which adds a bunch of human interaction uh, to it. So there's a pair of microphones on it, there's a camera on it, there's the screen you can see as well, um, and then a five-way selector, a few dot star LEDs, and a few buttons. It's just a interaction unit, a hardware layer between the software of the Raspberry Pi and the human. And of course, every way a human interacts with the software is a place where machine learning could be used. And this is where Microsoft Lobe comes in, a tool designed to make it easy to create and train neural networks without needing the deep level of understanding in computer science background and a million other things that actually doing machine learning from scratch requires. The blog post goes on to give a bunch of different examples, but I think this explains it perfectly. This is Lady Ada of Adafruit using Microsoft Lobe to uh, train a model on what kind of bun is underneath the camera so that it can learn to classify it by itself. There is a link out from this page to the GitHub page for the project, which has a, a few different projects that you can, a few different example projects that you can follow to learn. And of course, I will leave a link to this blog post in the description of the video. Moving over from Raspberry Pi to Arduino, if you are interested in TinyML, that is the library for Arduino that does machine learning, Massimo Banzi of Arduino will be giving a talk on Zoom on July 20th. I'll leave a link to this tweet in the description, but if you follow this link here, you can register for the webinar and it is free. Moving over to the Electromaker website for a couple of projects, starting with the wearable sense gloves. Over the last year, many of us have become quite familiar with infrared temperature sensors and gloves, so Ashoka thought, why not combine them? Which is exactly what the wearable sense gloves do. Uh, this is a project that uses an, a Nordic dongle, the NRF52840, um, which is a Bluetooth low energy dongle that um, you can attach, as you can see here, via USB for programming. Um, but it also has a little uh, infrared sensor here. Um, and uh, you can see there's a couple of capacitors for smoothing and things like that. Um, if I look down here, you can see there's another shot of the glove itself and a close up on the, of the Proto Board Circuit 2. Um, so the writer goes through exactly how it all fits together and works. Um, but yeah, just a lovely little project, a great idea, um, a very prescient idea. And um, as always, what, with this being an Ashoka uh, uh, tutorial, there is a fantastic video on his YouTube channel as well. So I will leave a link to this in the description of the video. This next project is about the Minecraft GOAT, which is the best thing that's been added to Minecraft in some time. And Ethan Michael obviously thought so as well, because this is a real life Minecraft GOAT that when it detects you, will charge you and bump into you. The project video starts by talking about what the GOAT should do before going into how this build works. Um, it used an old remote control car and then basically stripped out all of the electronics that are already in there apart from the motors, put a new driver board in and a Raspberry Pi for doing all of the thinking. Um, so essentially the new GOAT's brain is a Raspberry Pi. So when you compare the actual Minecraft GOAT to the GOAT that ended up coming out, I think this looks actually fantastic. This video is a great watch, it has high production value, um, and there, there's of course a step-by-step -step guide here as well. Um, I will leave a link to it in the description of this video. Up next, a video from Sprite's Mods. This is on the Sprite TM YouTube channel, um, and uh, this is just uh, Sprite playing a, a regular Game Boy, just regular Game Boy games like uh, Sonic the, well, that's Mario, Super Mario World. Regular Game Boy games like uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, well-known Nintendo character. Uh, regular Game Boy games like Doom, a well-known Nintendo game Doom. No, this video is a fantastic troll, and in fact, I wonder how many people who are slightly younger than me might watch this video and not necessarily see anything wrong with it. This is actually a very tongue-in-cheek way of showcasing this truly fantastic Nintendo Game Boy mod. And when I say fantastic, I really do mean fantastic. Um, this uses so much of the original Game Boy and then puts a custom Raspberry Pi Zero based board inside it um, and basically created an entire new driver which uses the screen and the buttons, the original speaker, so many elements of the Game Boy. It even uses the cartridge system in order to start games. Um, it, it's way too complex even for me to fully understand and certainly for me to go into in detail here. Um, but yes, uh, if you are interested in this, there is a thorough write-up on the Sprites Mods website. It is 
one of the best Raspberry Pi anything things that I have ever seen. Um, I'll leave a link to the video because the video is absolutely hilarious and definitely worth a watch. But if you are interested in the thorough write, uh, write up, head down into the uh, uh, description of his video where this page link is. And now a super useful DIY project that was featured on the Arduino blog. This is an Arduino controlled checklist. And you can probably see from this photo how it works already. Um, there is a Reddit thread as well, which actually shows it in action. And yes, essentially you turn it on, everything is in the red. And then when you have got all these things in your pocket or not forgot or in your bag or whichever way, uh, you can press the button and it will turn it green. It is a simple checklist to make sure you do not leave the house forgetting anything important. The project uses an Arduino Nano as the brains, along with a Maxim chip for running the LEDs, which are these red green LEDs you can see down the side. It also has a very nice enclosure and a 3D print, these, this 3D printed thing here is designed to stop the light bleeding over. So it has a very clean and uniform light as you probably just saw in the video. Um, if you want to, to get to this Reddit thread that I saw the video in, um, there is a link to it on the blog post. There's also a link to a Google uh, folder here, which has the code, a checklist sch uh, schematic here, and a few images as well. Just before moving on, a little quick housekeeping. If you are enjoying the Electromaker show, there are three very simple ways that you can help us. The first is to subscribe to the channel if you are not already. Um, the second is to click like on the video if you are liking it. It seems like the majority of people like this video, although we had one unhappy customer. Um, and here, this is the notification bell you'll hear people talking about on other channels. Um, it does do us a great favor if you do select all notifications. What this will mean is you'll get a little notification up here in the top corner when we upload to the channel. And we pretty much only upload the Electromaker show to the channel. So if you are enjoying it, it's a good way to know there's a new uh, episode of the show out as soon as you head to the YouTube website in general. Um, none of these things are compulsory, but they do help us out a lot. And as always, do consider uh, visiting the electromaker.io shop if you're looking for equipment. And there will be a link in the description to the Electromaker Discord channel where you can come and hang out with us. But anyway, uh, that is our little self-promotion corner over with. Let's get on with the rest of the show. Moving over to IOTA, which is a pre-launch project on crowd supply. Now, this is a development board which is designed for use with cellular or mobile uh, connections. So you put a SIM card in this. It's not a Wi-Fi or a Bluetooth board. It uses a SIM card and it is CAT, CAT M1 and NB IoT rated. It should work in wh whatever country you are in. You should be able to find a SIM card that you can use with it. And it is an Arduino compatible development kit. Now, that is quite exciting because Massive IoT, as it is called, is, is this idea of having um, highly connected connected uh, boards which aren't necessarily that performant rather than having one or two boards that do everything and talk to each other um, maybe you're in an environment where that's not so possible maybe you're in a harsh environment having many boards which do not have much complexity in their performance but can communicate with each other as part of a mesh or otherwise um, is a fantastic thing it's something that the industry is very excited about right now but I am not in that industry I just look at it from afar and make a show in an attic however this board is one that I am very very interested in it constitutes something very different as far as I'm concerned. Um, now, the board, uh, the board itself uses the SARA R410M um, system on module, system on chip, system in a box. I don't actually know. I've never come across this before, um, but uh, I know that they are very uh, widely used. I, I recognize the name U-Blocks, but yeah, again, this isn't my world. It does look super interesting, though. Um, there's a bunch of specifications here. Um, uh, it seems to be a little bit different than most development boards that show up. Um, I know for some people this will seem very normal, but for me it's all kind of new and very exciting. I look forward to seeing how much it costs. Um, and we'll come back to this one when it goes live. I will leave a link to it in the description. This week we have a special competition. Rather than the regular mystery box competition, we are giving away one of these. And this is a Nordic NRF5340 development kit. It is a fully featured evaluation board for the NRF5340, which is a system on chip which can do everything Bluetooth. Bluetooth Low Energy, Mesh, Zigbee. It's a really fantastic board. So this is the article I wrote about the NRF5340. Um, you can read it if you like. I'll leave a link to it in the description. It's a fairly long but still quite high level overview of the board and um, how you use it, what you can use it for. Um, but to try and summarize it very quickly, uh, this development kit uh, gives you every single way that you can interact with this uh, Bluetooth low energy and Zigbee thread, all the, all the good things. It's a dual core, arm, dual core ARM Cortex chip at the end of the day. Um, they're incredibly powerful industry standard chips uh, and this development board just breaks it out into every Every conceivable way you could imagine and the documentation from Nordic is not half bad either um, and uh, as the trend goes which I'm so happy to say is happening seemingly across the board all of the Nordic development tools are free to get started with and I think a lot of them are just free in general which is a very nice thing to see
So to enter the competition to win this Nordic 5340 development kit, you just need to be subscribed to the Electromaker YouTube channel, leave a comment on this video saying what you would do with this development kit if you win it, and leave the hashtag NRF5340. Um, that is all you need to do. Uh, and uh, yeah, whoever wins, um, I really look forward to seeing what you come up with with this. Um, there's a whole host of things that this thing would be great for. As I mentioned before, it's Zigbee and Thread compliant, great for smart home stuff. Um, and if you've ever wanted to learn an industry standard Bluetooth low energy stack, um, uh, this is a perfect board to do so. As I mentioned at the start, it's a bit of a shame to give this one away. I would love to keep it and fiddle with it. But alas, it will go out to one of you instead, and I'm sure it will find a wonderful home. And the answer to does it doom is yes. We're going to finish out the show with a couple of new projects, starting with an add-on board for the Up Extreme. And as we so often do, we're going to let CNX Software guide us through this. So this is an add-on board for the Up Extreme. Uh, before we go into it, just a quick reminder. The Up Extreme is a single board computer. It is an x86. It uses the Intel Whiskey Lake series of processors. It is a very powerful little single board computer capable of quite a lot. So the Connect Plus adds three more gigabit Ethernet ports along with an SD card port here. You can see, not SD card, sorry, a SIM card port you can see here. This is a four, uh, five, you can connect this to 5G through this port. And there's a couple of other nice things it adds as well. Um, so uh, this is by itself not that notable as I know not that many people have the Up Extreme board, which I think is a shame. This is a very powerful little SBC. Um, and whether you're going to be using it for something professional or using it as something at home, um, I find that the fact that they're adding all of this functionality to it is a good thing. Um, and if you do already own the Up Extreme board, um, you can now easily add 5G connectivity to it. And finally for the show, a combination new product and funding website things, because it has already been funded. This was a Kickstarter um, for an opto isolated eight channel array. Uh, we're getting this uh, courtesy of linuxgizmos.com, um, uh, which is where I read it first. Um, and uh, as you can see, it's quite a nice looking circuit board, which has eight opto isolated uh, relays on it. And it works as a hat for the Raspberry Pi. There's also an optional touch screen, um, which you can see here. Um, there is some software, that, uh, example software that you can get for it. Um, and uh, the, as I mentioned, this was a Kickstarter. And here it is. You can see uh, a few more images of it in the video here. Um, I just really like the idea of having an actual dedicated hat for uh, for this kind of uh, relay system. Um, I've messed around with the uh, eight channel relay boards. There's absolutely nothing wrong with those. Um, it's just nice to have this that fits perfectly into the Raspberry Pi and the power is already considered because powering um, five volt relays from Raspberry Pi pins can sometimes be a little bit janky. It's doable, but you have to work around it. Um, and it's just nice to have something that works out the box without any shift leveling. Um, if you are interested in it, you can get the board itself for uh, just £25, which is around €30. Euros. Um, and that's uh, just this board itself. Um, but if you want um, more, I think there's a version that comes... Yeah, here. Um, if you pledge £60, you get one that actually comes with the Raspberry Pi 4 as well. Um, and £75 gets you the uh, Pi, Pi Relay 8, which is the name of this. I don't know why I find that so difficult to say. Pi Relay 8, um, along with the little touch display that you can see here. Um, and then there's various other different versions you can get on Kickstarter as well. Um, as I've mentioned just a second ago, there's nothing about this specifically that is any different to just setting up your own touchscreen, setting up your own relays, but it is nice to see a product that is just so well designed and put together to do one thing and one thing well. Because after all, one of the real draws for ra uh, Raspberry Pis is home automation, and this allows you to automate pretty much anything that runs power. It's just a nice, simple project, not that expensive, and a good Kickstarter to boot, so I thought it was definitely worth closing out this week's show with. That has been our show for this week. Thank you so much for joining me and thank you as always for all the support you were showing this show. It, we really notice it. It really means a lot. Um, we'll be back next week with more fun projects and bits of news. As always, if there's anything that you want us to put in the show and you think fits, head over to the Discord. We have a channel there specifically for things that you think might be good for the show. Um, but as always, I hope you have a creative, fun and safe week and I will see you in the next one.